by the time the reader gets to the end of the book, we're left with a lot of context for the African geopolitical situation that we are in at the moment. Yes. And is, is that something that you intended to? Yes, I, I sort of knew the destination. I mean, um, and um, then I knew what the beginning was because of the Egypt example. And then there was a question of just sorting out uh, what the route was all the way kind of through 5,000 years of history. But it seemed to me to be uh, relevant to explain where Africa is now. And indeed, I give a glimpse, so this is a very brief glimpse, of what Africa is expected to be like. I've used the expertise of other people on this. Uh, what Africa is expected to be like in about 2050. So it looks at, uh, there's a bit of a glimpse of the future. But since, if, if you like, the parameters of the future continue to change, and they're even kind of changing this week with things like kind of the drop in the oil price and so on, which affects uh, Africa's oil producing states. Um, it, 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 there's not much point on dwelling on the future, particularly if you've already kind of covered 5,000 years of history. But I wanted to explain in many ways how Afri what it is that uh, le let Africa reach the stage that it is at now. And many of the features, if you like, that we see in modern Africa uh, have been in place for several centuries. Many of the problems that Africa faces uh, come from things like the fact that African states are all, apart from Egypt as it happens, but are all artificial entities. They were uh, drawn up in the 19th century by European powers who were bent on controlling African territory. So the borders are all artificial. This creates an enormous amount of difficulty today. That's what African politicians have to kind of deal with uh, almost on a daily kind of basis. It's a source of great instability because there are rival groups incorporated in the same state who compete e with each other for power all the time. Um, and uh, there are other kind of um, uh, uh, peoples who've been split up by the imposition of, 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 of European um, instituted kind of borders. The Bakongo people of the Western Congo Basin divided up between French Congo, the Belgian Congo, and Portuguese Angola. It's an example, and, and, and today the Bakongo people still hanker for the idea of restoring their old, old kingdom, which was in existence for several centuries before the Europeans came anywhere near them. And so this creates a great deal of kind of inst instability, political instability, and maneuvering, and constant con competition. Uh, so you can see, as it were, the effect of decisions made in the 19th century, which have ramifications even today. Hmm. Now, of course, we would love for you to continue writing about Africa. Do you have any plans to follow this up? I'm not not on, on anything kind of quite like the same scale, and certainly not on a kind of continental basis. Um, I think I've kind of uh, almost exploited. I mean, in a sense, this isn't my own work. It's actually largely the work of other people who've been burrowing, historians who've been burrowing away on this kind of specialist subjects. What I've come uh, along and done is kind of hoover up all their scholarship and use it for my own purposes. But it will be impossible to undertake another book on this scale. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure.